Anyway, we'll meet the man who draws Little Orphan Annie in a moment as, to tell the truth, now displays some artistic commercials. Art. Are chopping those onions making you blue? Tired of the same old dinner? Want some... This is Daddy Warbucks. Mrs. Warbucks is seen talking to Annie at the head of the orphanage and the head of the orphanage. Now, in order for this comic strip to really come to life, I, I want to call on the celebrated to tell the truth players to act out this little drama, word for word. Now, here, here are two copies. Oh, uh, you God. can split them between. You see the parts are marked out there. Split them so you can all see. That's a copy of the strip in question. Now, the part of Annie obviously cries out for Peggy Cass, and Kitty naturally... Well, she's been cast as Mrs. Warbucks. Naturally, I have a lorgnette in my And head. lorgnette, right. <laughs> <laughs> now, now we got a problem because one of the two remaining parts is a woman's part, and the two remaining players are not. So the head of the orphanage, where Annie has been uh, living uh, right now, uh, Gene, you're a man of many parts. Will you mind being a lady <laughs> just, just for this <coughs> afternoon, this evening? Yeah, Certainly. She, she looks like she might be suspect anyway, that yeah, lady. <laughs> right. Now, Tom, this is your big chance. Now, you're the butler, and I only have three words, Tom. I, I know you're going to give it that old post and try. So three words make the best of them. All right, panel, it's Little Orphan Annie time. Go to it. I will take her, of course, but it must be only on trial. Naturally, Mrs. Warbuck. <laughs> Knowing orphans as I do, I hardly agree with you. <laughs> wow. Gee, this is the first time I was ever in an automobile. It sure is a kitten's rompers, isn't it? <laughs> really? How <laughs> quaint. Hey, he's driving right in the front door. Leaping Limburger. What a lot of floors to scrub. Egbert, you will show Miss Annie to her room. <laughs> oh, quite right, madam. <laughs> <laughs> There, I <laughs> to think that Mary LaGuardia used to do that all by himself. You know that? that was fun. Anyway, great. I, I can't tell you how well you did, nor will I. <laughs> anyway, let's meet the man who draws Little Orphan Annie. Number one, what is your name, please? My name is Tex Blaisdell. Number two. My name is Tex Blaisdell. Number three. My name is Tex Blaisdell. Okay, panel, here's Tex Blaisdell's story. I, Tex Blaisdell, am a comic strip artist. I now draw one of the most famous features of all time, Little Orphan Annie. As many of you know, it was the late Harold Gray who created the girl with the curly red hair. Along with her adventuresome friends, Daddy Warbucks, Sandy, Punjab, and the Asp, Annie's looks have hardly ever changed except for a brief period when she was given big brown pupils in her blank saucer eyes. Now, this apostasy lasted only two or three years. The fans of Little Orphan Annie are resting easy now. Her eyes are as blank as ever. There seems to be no end in sight for the red-headed Moppet. In this world of inconstancy and change, the Little Orphan Annie comic strip has been published without interruption for 46 years. Signed, Tex Blaisdell. <laughs> Well, all three gentlemen claim to be Tex Blaisdell. We'll start the questioning with the man who was so well cast and so successfully su uh, successful recently as the three-worded butler, Tom Post. Oh, yes, well. Uh, do you know, number two, who Leffingwell is? He was uh, an associate of Harold Gray's throughout the years. Is that why little Joe always looked so much like the drawings in Orphan Annie? Yes. Oh, uh, thank goodness, because I was sure that at one time, I thought they must be one and the same, but no, I'm just an associate. Yeah. I Thank believe you. he's a, a relative. Ah, uh, well, both both great great comics. I've loved them since I was a little kid. Thank you, Tom. Uh, Peggy. I thought I told uh, a lie. Uh, number three, is this Mrs. Warbuck, Daddy Warbuck's mother? No, she's his wife. Oh, number two, what happened to that lady? Because she certainly has been it when I've been reading it. Well, she was written out of the strip after a few years because she was an unsympathetic character. Uh, number one, did she have a demise or did she just fade away? Uh, she faded away rather rapidly. 
I see. Uh, no, uh, number two, has little orphan Annie ever had a, a playmate, another kid to play with, or she always had those freaks like putting jab in the ass? <laughs> Just Sandy. She never had a real little fella to play with of her own? Uh, depending on uh, whatever sequences uh, she's involved with at the time. But they just come and go. Ah, uh, thank you, Peggy. Jean Rayburn. Number two, would you tell us how long you've been associated uh, with this venture? About two and a half years. Yes. And number one, how did you learn to draw this technique? How does one go about doing that? Well, the technique involved in the Little Orphan Annie is uh, copying Harold Gray's uh, technique himself. Uh, I went to art school. I see. Number three, why were the eyes drawn on Little Orphan Annie as they were originally drawn to look so goofy? Well, the eyes uh, were originally drawn, according to Mr. Gray, uh, to give her a very... <laughs> give her what? Uh, uh, you, you may, may go ahead. That. It's yeah. my turn. Yeah. To give her a unique look. And he put the uh, pupils in the eyes for two or three years because uh, he got tired of them, just looking at them. And number two, nobody liked it. Are you speaking to me? Yeah, number two. Uh, what was the question? Oh, never mind. <laughs> um, number two, how far ahead do you draw your strip? Uh, four weeks on the dailies and about six on the Sunday. I see. And number one, who does the words? Uh, that the writer uh, prefers to remain anonymous. Oh, you nobody knows who he is. No, I know who he is. <laughs> <laughs> I'll believe anything. <laughs> I don't know if you heard that I comment. Know. Norman Mailer does not do the words. I'm reasonably sure he doesn't. Uh, time to mark your ballots for number one, two, or number three. Fifty dollars for the wrong answer. Five hundred if you're all wrong. Okay. Will the real Tex Blaisdell? Please stand up. Wait a minute. No, no, hold it, hold it, hold it, hold it. Will a real Tex Blaisdell please sit down? Hey, I could have really blown the whole week, bit there, couldn't I? And if I made one more mistake, Gary would be back next Monday, right? So he's coming back anyway, so what do I care? Go ahead. Go ahead, Tom, and vote. I don't care. I, I voted for number two because... Uh, as an ink-stained wretch, as I started to draw my number two, I saw him go, oh, bad form. <laughs> so I thought that was... Really one for fun. two. Peggy? I wish I knew why one of them was called Tex. None of them sound as though they come from Texas. But number one looks like an artist friend of mine named Worsham Rudd. So I voted for him. Those artists all Worsham look alike. Worsham Rudd, Gene. Oh, I know Worsham Rudd. Yeah. Sure, yes. I voted for number two because uh, he looks as if... Uh, like Vincent Van Gogh a little bit. <laughs> Kitty? <laughs> I voted for number two. I thought he had very good information and delivered it with uh, a great deal of authority. And he looks as though he might be doing this. One for one, none for three, and three for two. It's time now. Can I do it now? Can I? Now? Yeah, now. Oh, now. now Bill. Oh, I don't want to. Go Will ahead. a real Tex Blaisdell please stand up? Uh, there we are. Nobody knows who does the words. May we ask? Oh, yes. We'll, we'll, we'll take care of the imposters now. Uh, number one, would you tell us who you are and what you did do, sir? Yes, my name is Bob Gray. I am captain on a 60-foot power yacht uh, available for charter. We're out of World's Fair Mar Marina. It's the guy uh, suited, too. Uh, diggity. <laughs> number, uh, number three, would you tell us who you are, sir, and what you do? My name is Byron Sanders. I'm an actor most recently appearing as John Randolph on the daytime serial Love of Life. Oh. <laughs> Kitty. Kitty has a very good question. Would you ask it? Uh, yes, uh, Mr. Blazel, is it true that the, uh, the, the writer is anonymous? Uh, not to me. He just doesn't want me to mention his name. I see. Uh, For any reason? Uh, he prefers to remain anonymous. Thank you. He's paying alimony. Yeah. Uh, earlier, it's a, it's a early, structure. <laughs> earlier, we saw one of the very first sequences of Harold Gray's Little Orphan Annie. We also saw uh, one of his later versions, which showed that Annie's eyes had developed pupils. So I think it's only fair to see just what Tex is currently doing with Annie. So Tex, would you please come front center and show us an example of your work, if you would, please. We'll watch this. I see hair. I saw hair. 
Yes. Oh, Calcutta's good, too. Yes. Terrible. Terrible. Here come the eyes. No? No, it's not the eyes yet. <laughs> there we go. That's one, two, and three. There she is. I think she's cute. I do too. She's adorable. This is a very unusual. There she is. This is a very unusual work. Play Thank you, Tex. Thank you, Tex plays the little impostor for playing to tell the truth. Thank you. Get ready to play. Hi, I'm Marianne Coran. I know you get the final Jeopardy questions correct when you...